Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to find the area of a graph of an enclosed region in polar coordinates using only the calculator. So this always works as long as you have a calculator. So the first thing you want to do is put your calculator in polar mode. So you want to click here on mode and go down here to polar and hit enter. So change the mode to polar. The second thing you want to do is change the format. So go to second, zoom, and go over here to where it says polar GC. That stands for polar graphing coordinates. You want to hit enter to turn that on. Okay, so let me get out of here by hitting quit. Second, quit. So recap, go to mode, turn the polar coordinates on, Go to format, turn on the polar graphing coordinates, and then just get out of here by hitting second mode. The next step is to actually graph this. So you just go here and you hit y equals, then you just type it in. So 3, cosine, and then the variable theta, and then parentheses, and then enter. So before you hit graph, it's a really good idea to go to zoom and select zoom trig. So this is special. This will let you do pretty much every problem. So go to zoom trig and hit enter. And there's our graph. Okay, so zoom trig does a couple things. Let me go to window and show you. So this 0 0.1308996, that's actually equal to pi over 24. So when you go to zoom trig, your theta step is always pi over 24. I'm gonna write that down over here. So theta step, It's always pi over 24 when you go to zoom trig. All right, so there's a couple ways of doing this problem. Let's go back to graph. So method one, keep regraphing it. What do I mean by that? Figure out how long it takes for this thing to be traced out. So let's go to window, and notice the theta max is 2 pi. Let's change it to pi over 2, and hit enter and graph it. Okay, so if we do pi over 2, we get half of the circle. All right, let's go back to the window. Let's change it to pi. Hit graph. Oh, look, pi gives us the whole circle. So we're going from 0, I just hit trace to see the 0, from 0 to pi. So the answer is A equals 1 half definite integral from 0 to pi, and then you end up squaring this. So 3 cosine theta, quantity squared. So I'm going to explain it again, and I'm going to show you another way, so no worries. So again, go to window, and change it to something smaller than pi, like pi over 2. Hit enter and graph. You'll notice it doesn't trace out the whole thing, but when you change it to pi, if you change the theta max to pi, it traces out the whole thing. Now, if you do 2 pi, what happens is it gets traced out twice, and so you get the wrong answer, right? You want it to be traced out just once, so that's really important. How do you get this answer? Um, I'll go ahead and show you now. So you get out of here by hitting second quit. You go to math, and then you scroll down until you get to something that says integral. Yep, here it is, fn int. Then you hit enter. And just type in the numbers, right? So 0, hit the up arrow key, pi, go over here, parentheses 3, cosine your variable, parentheses, parentheses. Going kind of fast because I want to show you the other way of doing it, which I think is more beneficial and more versatile. So that's not the answer, right? Because we still have to divide by 2. So divided by 2. All right, so let's go back and let me show you how to do this a better way. Let's go back to the graph. So let's say that you know you have something else. Maybe you have like a rose where it has like lots of petals or something, and so you only want like a small section. So what you can do is make sure you're in zoom trig, which we are, and we're going to exploit the fact that theta step is pi over 24. So I'm going to hit trace, then I'm going to count. Watch this. One, two, whoops, wrong way. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so I get half of the circle in 12 tick marks. So I've traveled 
12 times pi over 24. So I've traveled pi over 2. So if I go from 0 to pi over 2, and I put a 1 half here, I get half of the area. So I can just take this and multiply it by 2. Beautiful stuff. Another way to do it would be to go back and continue counting. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so 24 tick marks. So if you do 24 times pi over 24, that gives you pi. So then you just go from 0 to pi, which is what we already had, and you have it. So you might be wondering, what is the point of this? Why would you have to do it this way? Again, it has to do with flexibility and versatility. If you have like the petal of a rose, you can just count and say you have eight tick marks. So if you have eight tick marks, if you click it eight times, then you've traveled eight times pi over 24. So you've traveled pi over three. So you go from zero to pi over three. So all you do is you graph your polar graph, you hit trace and you just start counting. And it's just a super cheap way of being able to find the limits of integration. I hope this video uh, has helped someone. I hope it made sense. It's a little bit confusing, uh, but once you understand it, uh, it's pretty invincible. That's it.